The bill we're considering today reinforces the promise that the United States Congress, on behalf of the entire federal government, made to our constituents a generation ago. Today we're keeping that promise. We will accept responsibility for and properly dispose of radioactive waste. This is long overdue. Americans across the country, from Maine to Southern California, from Florida to the Pacific Northwest, are watching today, and they're expecting us to act. You know, the Department of Energy's Hanford site is just up the mighty Columbia River where, from where I live and where I grew up. That area and those workers helped us win World War II, and the site's nuclear program was instrumental in projecting peace through strength throughout the Cold War. While the community has been a constructive partner in support of our vital national security missions, it did not agree to serve as a perpetual storage site for the resulting nuclear waste. Fifty-six million gallons of toxic waste sitting in decades-old metal tanks at Hanford. These are those tanks that were being constructed to hold this waste. They are now buried in the ground. The only entry point is right here. The amount of waste stored at Hanford would fill this entire house chamber 20 times over. According to a recent Government Accountability Office report, the oldest of these tanks, some of which date back to the 1940s, have single-layer walls or shells. They were built to last 20 years. They will be almost 100 years old by the estimated end of their waste treatment. The Department of Energy has reported that 67 of these tanks are assumed or known to have leaked waste into the soil. There's an understandable sense of urgency in the Northwest behind the cleanup efforts that are underway at Hanford. H.R. 3053 will provide the pathway to clean up the contaminated Hanford site. You see, the waste from Hanford will end up in a secure permanent storage site that we believe will be Yucca Mountain. These tanks will be drained and cleaned out, the waste classified and put away. This bill keeps our commitment to energy consumers, too, who are legally bound to pay for a nuclear waste management program. These consumers in 34 states including Oregon, have paid the federal government in excess of $40 billion. Even after the last administration stalled the project, ratepayers continued to hand over nearly $800 million annually to develop the repository, until finally the courts stepped in and directed the fee collection be halted, because no repository was being constructed. That money was paid to the U.S. Treasury for a specific purpose, and we have a legal and moral obligation to advance the program for which ratepayers paid. Now, my friends in Nevada should have confidence the Yucca Mountain Repository will protect public health and the environment. The completion of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's impartial safety review will answer the many questions raised by the state of Nevada and provide an independent determination if the site meets the required one million year environmental protection standard. That's right, one million years. Consolidating the nation's nuclear material for disposal is better for the environment than the status quo, where these materials sit around in 121 communities in 39 states, or tanks like this. The legislation authorizes the Department of Energy to contract with the private companies to store nuclear waste, while DOE finishes the rigorous scientific analysis of the repository design and the associated Nuclear Regulatory Commission licensing process. So an interim storage facility can bring added flexibility to DOE's disposal program and may provide a more expeditious near-term pathway to consolidate spent nuclear fuel. The longer the government delays, the greater the potential consequences. The legal cost of inaction, a bill paid by every American taxpayer, is staggering. Today, taxpayers pay an average of $2 million every day, every day, in legal claims because we as a government have not done what was promised decades ago. We're doing that today with this legislation. Cumulatively, we're on the hook for nearly $34 billion that increases every day we delay action. Instead of contributing to an escalating national debt, this money could be better spent to support our men and women in uniform, deal with the opioid crisis, or a whole myriad of other things. By acting today, we 
will eventually turn off that penalty phase and start the productive phase. At the end of the day, this bipartisan legislation is good for our communities around the country and their safety. It's good for consumers and fiscal sanity. It's good for the environment, for secure storage. It's good for taxpayers, and it's good for national security as well. So I thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle who have put so much work into this, Mr. Tonko and certainly Mr. Shimkus. And I urge all our colleagues to support H.R. 3053. Let's put an end to these tanks before they put an end to us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.